All right, hello, this is Paul Tranny, and I want to dive into Adobe XD. So here's your crash course in it, and Adobe XD is launching now. You can see it allows you to design, prototype, and share, okay? So really, you can make any project that you want, and for even the Creative Jam, really think of anything that you want to make. We will get a lot of like iPhone or sort of mobile apps, but you can make sort of a watch size. These are just, you're just picking the artboards, but be creative with what you want to make, all right? Uh, I'm just going to launch into this iPhone size, so feel free to dive into that. You can see it right here. Make it maybe a touch larger, something like that. And uh, from here, I can dive into this. And typically what I'll do is I'll do something like team name one. So that'll just be my artboard. But whatever you have selected, you can change the color of it. In fact, not only changing the color, changing it from solid color to a linear gradient like I'm doing now. And keep in mind, you can adjust these points, uh, not only first and last, but you can add an additional point right in here. So uh, what I could do is I can, of course, change it to all the cool colors everybody likes, and, you know, something kind of like that as we fade this into, like, you know, a little bit of a blue. So you get the idea. So you could save. You could ha have these gradients. I could take this gradient, and I can use the Assets panel. So right down here, you see this one right down here? This is the Assets panel. Clicking right there, open, opening that up. Uh, by the way, uh, this is a, these are new icons, and I'm just going to step back because I'm actually using, uh, under apps, I'm using the latest version of Adobe XD CC. So check it out right in here. Uh, just hit update. If it uh, says install, just go ahead and hit you know, install for that or update, technically. So just make sure you have the latest version because we have some new features. So what I'm going to do right now is I kind of jump in here. I'd start to draw out things, right? Start to draw out, I don't know, a uh, rectangle. Uh, my favorite keyboard shortcut is Command-3. So Command-3 will zoom to selection. Boom. Turning off that border. Maybe taking this, rounding the corners. Maybe holding down the Alt key and just bringing out one kind of like that. So I can kind of make an interesting shapes for any shape. If you double click, you can manipulate these bezier points, right? And adjust even further. So I could do something like that. There's Boolean operations, which is mean like, oops, means, you know, giving you the ability to sort of like add and subtract. Like I take these two elements, bup, bup, right up here. And I can subtract the front from the back. Oh, you meant to put that in the center? Not a problem. If I just double click, I can access that little point, bring it right to the center, and then holding down some shortcut keys, I can do something kind of like that, okay? That's just a quick example. Again, it's maybe not the greatest, but it's a good starting point for this. And uh, for this app, you jump in and uh, change this to FYND, something like that. Adding text is exactly how you'd expect to add it really easily we'll change this to ultra light and you get the idea but even after i change this text if i want to like consistently have like headline text that's kind of like this i can add that over here uh, into the uh, assets panel so i'd add this as character styles boom h1 and then same thing for this gradient right here adding it for colors. I've actually added both those colors because I had multiple things selected and you can see that right in here. So you get the idea. That's squared away and uh, what I want to do is I want to take this to the next level. So duplicating this page for the second page maybe we'll drop in some images. So uh, from here feel free to uh, use whatever you want. I'm gonna grab some images from my desktop. And what I want to do is I want to use the, let's do this, um, whatever, city name, something like that, typing that in. But I want to use some images from my desktop. And we can change that to a different color. Big thing is I'm going to take these two. I'm going to maybe use this same size. Boom, done. Selecting these two. And what I want to do now is I want to use repeat grid. Clicking right here, repeat grid. Brrr, 
twirling that down, you get the idea, just like that. And that looks pretty good. I can tighten up that space. Everything kind of works as expected. But the reason I opened up uh, some of these, uh, showing you some of these images, I can grab these images right here and I can drop them on. And since it recognizes it a repeat grid, it's going to propagate it on down. So super easy to work with. I can always jump in here and notice I could change that text right there and make it maybe centered, maybe give it a drop shadow so we can kind of have that stand out a little more. And let's increase the opacity of that and maybe come in for this image and, you know, kind of make that stand out a little more. You get the idea. Of course, every single one isn't going to say, say city. What we can do is we can take a list of items in a TXT file, drop it right in there, and it propagates on down just like that. Okay, so that works out pretty well. Have those two squared away, these two images. Uh, let's just do team name. This is sort of screen two. We'll just call it team name two. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm just going to extend this down even further like that because I want this list to extend down and make this scrollable. And that's what this is all about. We see that point right there. It says, hey, you know what? Uh, it's really a viewport height of 667. Okay, so now when I click this little preview button right up here, clicking on that, and there we have it. We can scroll through you get the idea. I'm gonna make one more screen and then we'll get into more uh, prototyping capabilities. Um, I could duplicate this, Command D, right? That's one way of doing things. Maybe shrinking that up, selecting all these images, but I just wanna make like the Cuba page. So typically I shrink things up like this, an ungroup grid like that. And now I have just these two elements all ungroup this and basically I'm making the sort of the content page right here. Let's make this image full like that, like that. And let's grab a content area. So I can drag out a box. Okay. And instead of just doing sort of a black box that has text in it, and let me just add some text really fast by clicking and dragging. I P S U M M. There's some just long ipsum. Taking this down to 16, left justified, regular, adding that to my character styles, done, right? That's more along the lines of what I want, okay? But instead of using just a black boring box, come over here and say, hey, you know what? Let's make this background blur. So blur out that background for that box, maybe make it a little darker or lighter, but this has a much cooler look. Uh, than what I had before and keep in mind that's how that works. So that's what I would typically do here uh, and uh, you know um, have my three and technically you need four screens. I'm gonna add one more screen. You ready for this? File, get UI kits. Okay, iOS, wireframes, more UI kits. I'm gonna show you those because I already have them downloaded. I think for the audience Make sure they know what you did and didn't do. But you can see right in here that we have these items. Zoop. All these different UI kits that you could take a look at. Uh, just let the audience know what you did and didn't do, you know. But I think I'm going to go into wires and just open up mobile. Because these are just some wireframes. Really simple for this find app. I want to actually use you know, some of these screens, right? So I don't want to recreate this, but I can copy this, you know, close that or whatever, come in here and then paste it in, right? So that's what I want to do. Notice how there are symbols over here. I could use these same symbols. Let's drop that in. In fact, command three, zoom into this, double clicking. We can edit this symbol, right? To change that to white. We can draw inside of it as well. Zoop. And if I've used this multiple places, by the way, we can see that, oop, click off of that, but we can just kind of see it change over here. But I'm gonna double click inside of this one. But basically I wanna make this box bigger. You get the idea, we can send that to the back, we can, you know, do something like that. Okay, so this is gonna be easier to click on. And these are my two instances of it. So that's all I'm doing, something like that. And let's put this in a couple more places, copying it, going to this page, pasting it, 
and then it looks like it's already here, but we will paste it again. All right, a couple more things. You ready for this? I love this. Dropping this in like that. Dropping in like this icon. And this is just as an example. Okay, for example, I want to show you this. This is a brand new feature. Okay, so what I'm going to show you is, you know, these icons. And what I want to do here for these elements is I want to take these three elements. And let's say, for instance, I have a different screen size. So I'm going to come over here and just like make a different screen size right over here. Taking these three elements. This is brand new. That's why I want to show this to you. Copying this, pasting this over, right, for these three shapes. What happens if I try to resize them, right? Uh, it's going to stretch them out. But what's happening right over here is we have a responsive resize turned on, and I can grab this, zoop, thank you very much. It doesn't distort them. It's responsive and super cool. So I did have to show you about that, show you that. I thought that was really cool, and you get the idea, and uh, I can continue to work on this. Uh, a couple more things I'm going to do that I will wrap this up. I want to prototype these, okay? So going to prototype. It's going to change. Things are going to look different. So as I click on this item, I get this little tag. It says, hey, you know, I can link this to something else. What I could do is I can take this whole artboard and point it to this second artboard and go ahead and add some sort of transition to it. Right? There's overlay. There's previous artboard. But really, I could just have it sort of dissolve into the next one. Okay? So that's all that's going to happen there. This one right here, click and drag, pointing it there, and this time it is going to slide left, okay, like that. And maybe for this one, for this big image, clicking here, it's going to slide left as well. And then these arrows, what are we going to do? We could write, we could actually click on this tag and check this out. Rather than going to a previous artboard, I could just say, hey, um, uh, uh, previous artboard, that's what I want to do. Transition to the previous artboard, easy enough. So I can do that for all of these previous artboard. And previous artboard. All right, cool. You got that. Uh, and we can dive into this. By the way, if I take a look at this, there's also uh, there's some other triggers coming. Uh, clicking play, here it is. Click, scrolling click, click, you get the idea. And this is all I need to do. Maybe one more thing I'll do right over here for these assets at the top. I can take them and make sure they always stay at the top by giving them a fixed position, just like that. Boom. And now they're always going to stay in place as I scroll. You get the idea. Okay, so what you're going to give us is you're going to give us all these screens. Select four screens. Go to File, Export, Selected, right? And give the, us those screens in a folder called Team Name, right? You can see some other images in there. So I'm going to make sure they are not in there. So again, that's why I'm going to get rid of these because those mean nothing to me. Maybe we'll get rid of that for now. But that's why I'd name them team name one, two, three, four, JPEGs, exporting them out. There they all are, right? Easy enough. All four of these images based on the team name, right? Fix this one, by the way. Uh, another thing we need to, you need to give us is this video. So we're going to record a video. I'll go back to this first screen, by the way. And hit record. Right now it's recording a video. I get this little dot. You can say, hey, my app's all about finding unique things. It's called Find. As you click, you can see this second screen as you can scroll through, blah, blah, blah. Right? You get the idea. It's recording this. You don't have to make it tremendously long because during the presentation you can always hit stop. But in general, we're going to stop recording the video and we'll call this team name as well. Saving this into that same folder just like that. Done and done. Right. Last two things you need to give us is a prototype link right over here. Publish prototype. And this should be team name 
whatever your team name is. Create that public link, just make sure you don't give it a password. Take that link and put it in a text file. So this is my link, uh, you know, what a, whatever, www, just whatever it is, it's right in here. In fact, we can preview it right here. It's going to be this long link right here as it gets a little shorter. And that's what you'll paste into this right here, right? Boom. And then give us a quick description of your Fantastic app. These are for later on. We want to be able to make sure you get credit for all your work. Need to be able to kind of like link out so people can actually see those prototypes. But that's all you need. Uh, just package up all that. Just put it in one folder and put it on a USB drive and you are done. Make sure you save your file. But that is a crash course in Adobe XD. My name is Paul Tran. In case you have any questions... There I am, and you can always get a hold of me later on, and I look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thanks so much.